It's true, it's book four, beautiful big voice, chapter six, sudden death. Though he was in the lead, Steiner rode his BMX hard. As he fishtailed down the final slope, his mind was churning. Steiner remembered slowing down, thinking the path ahead looked strange. The dead leaves seemed too neatly piled, he now realized. Then he had heard Cletus' shout of surprise as he fell into the ditch. Cletus hadn't known the hole was there. Steiner was sure of that. So if the trench had been dug, Damon's henchman hadn't dug it. Steiner bunny hopped his BMX onto a segment of paved road and coasted to the relay line, where Roth was waiting, poised on his rudder blades, to begin the next to last leg. Beside Wolf stood the little golden tea pendant wear kitten. Steiner smothered a grin. Wolf didn't seem to despise the team pendant recruit. On the contrary, he seemed to enjoy flirting with the enemy. Under the watchful eye of the race officials, Steiner yanked the flag from his pocket, slammed it into Wolf's hand, and passed on the warning. There's something dangerous about this race, and it's not just team pendants. Be careful. Aren't I always? Wolf shot the wear kit in a grin and took off down the asphalt inline track. The extreme monsters were winning, and no matter how cute the competition was, Steiner knew Wolf planned to keep it that way. It was a good thing, too, because Jinx would probably need all the lead time they could give her just to figure out how to work that stupid kayak on wheels. As Wolf disappeared around the curve, Cletus Slide rode in with several bikers hot on his tail. There was a flurry of activity as relay flags were passed. The team pinned its wear kitten was off. She crouched low and skated like greased lightning. Steiner whistled as he watched her disappear down the road. Wolf had better watch his tail, he thought. Steiner walked his BMX to the transport and loaded his bike. He turned down the offer of a ride to the finish line. He noticed that Val was no longer a lot surveying the race. That probably meant BMX riders had been hurt, and that Val and Mumford were on the ground trying to help. I'll see if they need another pair of hands, he thought, and I'd like to get a closer look at that hole. Steiner was beat after the grueling race. He released the strap of his power-dampening wristband and felt the surge of monster stamina. Steiner broke into a jog and began retracing the bike trail back up the mountain. Ten minutes later, he spotted the clump BMX riders, two humans and a troll with non-life-threatening injuries and damaged bikes were slumped near the hole. There was Val and Mumford, but as Steiner studied the hole, Mumford dropped down beside him. He was hanging upside down from a bandage hooked to a tree limb. What's up? He asked. Sabotage, said Steiner, brushing away the juniper branches hiding the hole. He pointed to the shovel marks visible on the side of the pit. Someone dug this hole in the middle of the relay track, and I don't think it was Damon Christopher. I know, said Manford. A girl broke her leg in it. Val carried her to the medics. 
he landed right side up and threw down the handlebars he had retrieved from the tree. He looked at Steiner. Come here a second. Mumford led Steiner to the edge of the terrace, then up the slope and into the windbreak. He crouched beneath the juniper trees, pointing at the ground. In the dust, Steiner saw the print of a giant's foot. That foot points away from the hole, right? said Mumford. I bet whoever made this print dug the hole, then left it going this way, using the windbreak as cover. Do you think we should look for more footprints? asked Steiner. Beneath his bandages, the young mummy grinned. You're a mind reader, all right. After his talk with Doc, T-Rex, and Damon, Val soared back into the air. T-Rex had sent transports and medics for the injured bikers. Val knew Mumford was with him, so he figured they'd all be okay. But the danger seemed to be multiplying, and that worried Val, especially since neither he nor Doc had any idea of who or what was the cause. A biker had been hurt in this last encounter. Next time, someone could die. Val was forty feet up in the air when he heard a squawk. He turned mid-air and scanned the ground. Doc and T-Rex were talking under the yellow pendant banner. Neither seemed to have heard the noise. Damon had retreated beneath the shade trees. My ears are sharper than theirs. Not Val, but I'm tired and jumpy. Val could feel a headache coming on. I probably imagined it, he mumbled to himself. If only I had some beet juice, I know I'd stop hearing things. Val struggled to get a grip. Quit whining, he told himself, just to make sure no one else gets hurt. Filled with new resolve, Val flew off to check on Wolf. The road Wolf was bleeding on originally spiraled around Sugar Mountain. It had been built so delivery trucks could transport the mature beets to the Sweet Beet Company. But in the past year, a portion of the road had been given away, cutting the beet fields off from the factory in the town below. Wolf couldn't think about that now. His job was to follow the road until he reached the end of his relay and get that flag to Jinx. Crouching low, Wolf sped down the asphalt on the electric cracks, twigs, and potholes that could trip him and send him tumbling. Down the hill he sped, picking up momentum with each push of his skates. Though he was wearing protective gear, helmet, wrist guards, knee pads, padded shorts, Wolf knew a fall could scrape off a lot of fur. He definitely wanted to avoid road rash. Wolf's first love was freestyle skating, with his challenging combinations of jumps, grabs, and grinds. But as the scenery rushed by, he found the speed just as heady. The whir of approaching wheels startled him. Wolf glanced over his shoulder. Kitty, the pendant wear kitten, had almost got him. She was using a double push, a speed technique that required two pushes in each single stroke of the skate. It was tiring, Wolf knew but very effective. She's fast, thought Wolf, but then she should be. Downhill's her specialty. It was just his luck that Damon had finally hired someone so good she didn't have to cheat to win. Wolf glanced back at the road. He swerved to avoid a fallen branch, and Kitty surged ahead of him. Crouching low, she hugged the bend in the road, following it around, putting distance between herself and Wolf. Wolf bent down, chasing her around the bend, 
tapping his legs and trying to make up the speed he had lost. We cross a bridge, then there's maybe another mile to the finish line, he thought. Lots of time to catch up. No, thirty feet ahead of him, the road disappeared. Where the bridge had been, there was a yawning gap, maybe fifteen feet across. Despite a desperate attempt at a heel stop, Kitty was sliding uncontrollably uncontrollably toward the edge. Don't, Wolf yelled, jump! But in his heart, he knew it was too late. She was going too fast to stop, and too slow to complete the jump to the other side. Wolf skated hard, trying to catch her. They'd both lose some skin, but they'd be alive. But Kitty was too far ahead. Wolf couldn't reach her. As he watched, she slid off the edge of the road and into space.